Jesus has the table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people come and dine. With his manna he doth feed and supplies our every need. Oh, tis sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Come and dine, the master calleth. Come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude Turn the water into wine, to the hungry calleth now, come and dine. Well, good morning. Thank you so much for listening today. Uh, this is Hawaiian Shirt Day at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Uh, no, we're not in Hawaii, but uh, that's the reason I'm wearing the shirt. And uh, as you find Psalms chapter 40, in the Old Testament, in Matthew chapter 5, in the New Testament, in your Bibles, let me tell you about one Sunday, I heard about a family who was driving home from church, and a little girl turned to her mother and said, Mommy, there's something about that preacher's message this morning I don't understand. And the mother said, Oh, well, what is it? And the little girl said, Well, he said that God is bigger than we are. And that God is so big that he could hold the whole world in his hand. Is that true? And the mom said, well, yes, uh, that is true, honey. And then she said, but mommy, he also said that God comes to live inside of us. And when we accept Christ as our Savior, is that also true? And uh, mom said, yeah, that is true. And uh, the little girl said, with a very puzzled look. Well, if God is bigger than us and he lives in us, wouldn't he show through? <laughs> well, that's a good point. And uh, if we are Christians and the Lord Jesus uh, lives within us, he ought to show through in our lives. And uh, as he shows through in our lives, uh, he ought to, ought to make an effect in our homes in our offices, our communities, on the job site, or wherever we're at, in every aspect of our life. I want to preach this morning on the subject of standing on the solid rock, rejoicing. Again, standing on the solid rock, rejoicing. Our text today is found in Psalms chapter 40, in verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me, and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed are happy is that man that maketh Lord the Lord, his trust. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, I pray today as we look into the Word of God for a few moments that you might uh, speak to our hearts, uh, help us, Lord, to be challenged, to let our light shine for Christ and uh, be all that we ought to be. And Lord, help us to be rejoicing in all that we have through Christ. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. The Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Uh, as David in Psalm chapter 40 here uh, was rejoicing over what God had done for him, the Apostle Paul was not ashamed uh, to share Christ wherever he went. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse thir uh, 14, it said, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now David said back in... 
Psalms 40, he saved me out of a horrible pit. Now, is that not true with all of us who have been saved? If we've been saved by the grace of God, we ought to praise God and to honor him. In fact, in Psalm chapter 150, it says, Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with the sound of a trumpet, praise him with a psaltery and harp, praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with the stringed instruments and organs, praise him upon loud cymbals, Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Wow. We ought to be praising God continually. You know, before I was saved, I was also in a pit of sin. I was in a pit of shame, a pit of confusion and frustration and fear, not knowing what should happen when I died. The bottom line was I was standing on a trap door of eternal judgment and separation from God. But thank God I was rescued. Christ rescued me. And somebody shared with me how that Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost and how that he died on the cross, was buried and rose again. And I accepted Christ. Christ came within me. And I was made a new creature in Christ. And he changed my life, gave me a song in my heart, and a purpose for living. And because of what Christ did for me, I certainly ought to be eternally grateful. And I want to challenge all of us today to honor the one who saved us from judgment gave us eternal life. You know, I really believe if we could truly understand all that the Lord has done for us, if we could understand the sacrifice that was made upon the cross for us, then I believe if we could grasp those thoughts and truly see them for what they are, we would all want to love Him and serve Him for the rest of our lives. You may be saying today, well, pastor, how can we honor him? Well, <clears throat> we read a while ago in Psalms 150 that we should all praise God, certainly with our mouths. But not only that, we should make him the Lord of our lives, the master. Uh, well, Jesus said, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Uh, as master and Lord of our lives, we ought to serve him. You know what a tragedy it is when folks don't take time to praise him and uh, with a sincere, heartfelt way, give glory to God and serve and obey him. Unfortunately, many uh, only serve in a kind of a half-hearted way. Uh, maybe when it's convenient, sometimes in a ritualistic, formal, or insincere way. Now, if he is not Lord of all, as we read in, uh, in that verse, Luke six forty six, why call you me Lord and do not the things which I say? Someone has said, if he's not Lord of all, then he's not Lord at all. You see, if he's worth serving at all, then he's worth giving our all to him in service. Remember the Israelites who were God's chosen people and to whom God had done much for. In Malachi chapter 1, it tells us in verse 8 how that they had been offering blind animals in their sacrifices they were making for God. And they were blemished animals, they were culls, the leftovers. But God was very displeased, and that did not satisfy God. To the people, serving the Lord had become a burden and not a privilege. Some say when they're asked to do something for the Lord, 
Instead of praising the Lord and saying, oh, I'm thankful I got an opportunity to do something for God, unfortunately, some of them consider it a burden and uh, do it perhaps out of a sense of duty, but not really from the heart wanting to do so. They may think in their heart, well, I, I don't really want to do it, but I guess I'll do it. And if they can't find anybody else, and then they go ahead and do it in a very half hearted uh, way, uh, motivated half-heartedly and, and, and prepare half-heartedly and then do it in a half-hearted way, just doing the bare minimum to get by. You see, my friend, should we not all want to love and honor and serve the Lord with all of our hearts? Certainly that's Reasonable, after all, he has done for us. You see, when you love somebody, you want to give them the very best you can. I love the story of Mel Trotter. Mel Trotter was a young man years ago in Chicago who uh, got involved in business and was doing very successfully, uh, 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 successfully in his business career, but he began social drinking, thinking it would help him to climb the social ladder and the ladder to success. He had a wife, and, uh, but somehow the alcohol took over him and began to control him to the point that finally he lost his job and then lost his home and ended up living in a cold flat or apartment without hot water and a apartment and a victim of alcoholism. Well, amazingly, his wife stayed with him through all of this. But one day, the little baby that they had became very ill. And someone called the doctor, and back in those days, the doctors would come to the home, came into the apartment, and examined the little baby, and realized the seriousness of the little baby's health, gave Mel Trotter a prescription, and said, you must get this filled immediately, or the baby could possibly die. And knowing that Mel Trotter didn't have the money to buy the medicine probably, the doctor, it is said, even gave him the money to go and buy the medicine. Well, Mel Trotter left, and on his way to the drugstore, he passed a bar. And the temptation was so strong that he could not resist and went in and used the money the doctor had given him to buy medicine. He used it to begin drinking. And there he met some of his old friends, and he continued drinking and in fact, drank until he passed out. And as they had done many times before, they took him and just put him in the back room. And when they closed the doors that night and thought he'll sleep it off and uh, uh, he'll go home in the morning. Well, the next morning, Mel Trotter woke up, realizing what he had done. And uh, he got up and went back to his home, but as he climbed the stairs to the apartment, he could hear voices inside the apartment. And so he kind of opened the doors just a little bit, glanced in, and he saw some people in his apartment and saw that the little baby had died. He waited, and when the people went into another room. He slipped into the hallway where that baby was. And uh, he saw that somebody had put a new pair of shoes on that little body. And Mel Trotter, as he looked down and saw those shoes, slipped them off, took them, slipped back out the door on notice, and went to hawk those baby's shoes to get another drink. Mel Trotter was so depressed because of the condition that he was in and what had happened that he decided that he would uh, 
take his own life. And on his way to take his life, he passed the Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago. He heard singing, gospel music, and somebody invited him to come in and listen to the message of salvation. And he went in and listened. And that day he received Christ as his Savior and was born again. Mel Trotter, after his conversion, decided he also wanted to start missions to help other people. And it is said that he was responsible for starting many missions all across the country. You see, if we could only really understand and grasp all that God has done for us, I believe we would all quickly surrender our lives to Him and seek God's will for our life. I think of the song <clears throat> of the Bill and Gloria Gaither wrote, Let's just praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, I pray today that you might help us to praise you and to rejoice and tell others about you. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for uh, getting us out of the horrible pit and putting our feet upon the rock that we might rejoice in your blessings. For all of this, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. And remember... The Lord is good, tell it wherever you go. The Lord is good, tell it that others may know. Tell of His goodness and tell of His love. Tell how He's coming from heaven above. The Lord is good, tell it wherever you go. God bless you. Have a great and wonderful day.